Prosecutor, to the Honourable James Faulkner, Presiding Judge. Your Lordship, is there such a thing as a perfect murder? People attempt to commit the perfect murder all the time. But if a murder is indeed perfect, how can one know how many have gone undetected? What does it take for a murder to be perfect? To begin with, you need the right place. A peaceful, small backwater. The city of St. John in the province of New Brunswick in eastern Canada. so fast I just knocked it from her hands then she ran into the bathroom and I followed her and then you shot her she started screaming at me I couldn't get her to shut up I pointed the gun at the ceiling I thought it would help stop the screaming and then you shot her I didn't shoot at her Why did you wait some um, <clears throat> eight hours before you called the police? I didn't know what to do. I swear, I loved my wife. No further questions. Vous pouvez descendre, Monsieur Richard. Lady, I'd like to take a five-minute recess. Yes, we'll recess for five minutes. Thank you. You're asking me for a deal? A reduction. Mm. I'll reduce it to second degree. That's the best I can do. Thanks. Thank you. I knew I could count on you. Hey. What? You want to come with me tonight to an opening at a museum? Still trying to seduce me, huh? Just like old days? I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> Listen, there'll be plenty of free food, and guess what? Maybe you'll meet someone. Wait. Free food? Uh -huh. See you there. Ciao. Settle beauty. I'm sorry, huh? I'm sorry, I thought you were somebody else. She just left me like that. She always does. The nice painting. You do something. 
sign. Um, um, did you read lips? Mm -mm. Andrew Garfield. Nice to meet you. sign because I I had a, a deaf um, girlfriend oh. yeah look wonderful <laughs> what <laughs> oh, I called you a wolf I told you I'm a little sign sorry <laughs> That's yours. I love it. you. Are let's yeah. get a look. Let's get out of here. I'm bored. Hi. Um. Nice meeting you. What was that all? This means a wolf. <laughs> what? I mean, I can't believe it. I finally, I come here and... <laughs> you keep goofing. Deborah, oh. she's beautiful. Andrew? Hi. Nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you. Are you here uh, drumming up some new clientele? Oh, actually, I was just going to the bathroom. So, excuse me. Something I said? No, it's just that uh, he's on the other side now. Ah, yes. And he is still blaming me for his mistakes. Anybody <laughs> ever. Every time I turn around, he's like... Kosher, but you two liking each other. What are you talking about? Wait, trying to cut a deal, Garfield? Oh, be nice, guys. Eh? You both may be partners one day. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, take it easy, fish. <laughs> My father used to always tell me there's two roads to eternal happiness religion or stupidity, or vice versa. <laughs> he fills the void. <laughs> well, if he didn't try so hard to be Mother Teresa, he'd be one rich lawyer, you know what I mean? You used to be just like him. What's that supposed to mean? Committed. Look where it got me. Mm. You're still wallowing in the bath. Life. Take some advice. It's gonna hold you back. You know something, Deborah? I really miss being on your side. Look at your opportunity. A few key cases and you're in the money. Not as long as St. Laurent's around. The son of a gun's bad mouth and me no major from in town will touch me. You knew what you were doing when you took him on. It comes at a high price. You know, I gotta leave this crummy city, start somewhere fresh. Maybe Florida. <laughs> You've been saying that since we graduated from law school.
divorce law. Well, um, <clears throat> I I have first-hand experience in divorce law. Yeah. I have something for you.
The perfect murder requires something more. The right characters. A long-suffering wife, Jane Clare. A rich, abusive husband, Norbert, Noby Clare. And an overambitious criminal lawyer, Andrew Garfield. A murder is perfect because we are not perfect. We do not see the obvious. from him. I, 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 look, I understand you're scared. Jane, please.
self-defense. It was self-defense. It doesn't matter. Jane, Jane, think. Just think. Think. I know what we can't do. That's a confess and go to trial. Your prenuptial gives them motivation. He had enemies. He had enemies. People that would like to see him dead. People capable of murder, right? Right? Yeah. Claire coping. Hysterical. She's at the hospital. What is her story? She slept right through it. She didn't hear the gunshots? Uh-uh. She's deaf. Mr. Miyoka. So? One exit wound, middle throat quadrant. Mr. Norbert Claire was killed by a wound to the chest. The result of a shot by a 357 Magnum. Did uh, Mr. Clare own a gun? Registration didn't have it. 
Whoever killed him wasn't a big fan. No, they, they never are. The body's been in the water for maybe 12 hours. After I get him to pathology, I'll have all the specifics. Wonder why they took his clothes off. Uh, Post-mortem bruises on the hips and waist. Maybe he was swimming naked. Then bang. A money clip. By the way, the police are calling this burglary. Three houses have been robbed in the neighborhood in the last four months. So, Claire was surprised swimming in the pond. Whoever it was knew he'd be there. Deborah, hmm? why can't you look past the obvious? <laughs> Okay. Well, he did have quite a number of enemies, most of which would like nothing better than to cement his shoes and sink him in the river. Start checking them out. Mm -hmm. Have you got something for me? What's that? Uh, some dry blood they found from Mrs. Claire's art studio. Send it to forensics. People are trying to commit the perfect murder every day. You're late. Yeah. I got hung up at the office. Yeah. Prospective client. Yeah. Saint Laurent's really got me under his thumb on this Claire case. Claire case? Yeah. Haven't you seen it? Rich guy got shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the guy in the elite. <laughs> what? You looking for clients? You said it yourself. If you get cases, I'm in the money. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. Whoever did it picked the wrong town. Should have gone to Montreal. Saint Laurent's on the warpath with this. He thinks it's gonna make him famous. He thinks the wife did it. Really? That'll be a good case, huh? Huh. You got any leads on her? Not uh, yet. Yeah. Other than he thinks that she's having an affair? Uh, people do that all the time. Doesn't mean they're murderers. <laughs> yeah, I guess you'd know about that. We gotta get into that. Huh? All right. <laughs> We're better off as friends anyway. So, tell me, what's her name? <laughs> You're so predictable. Yeah. And you're still in love with me. Right, Kim? Yeah. I told you everything. What was your relationship with your husband like? Like any other normal husband and wife relationship. We loved each other, but at times we argued. Is that what you're asking me, Miss Turner? Were you aware of any enemies he might have had? You've got to be kidding me. Just answer the questions. Jane, we can end this right now. No, no, it's all right. Let me see. There are a couple of people. Do you remember their names? Do you remember meeting them? Oh, wait. He never got along with something crazy about him getting along with the mailman. Or the guy who comes to clear to clean the pond, for that matter. Maybe that's why they killed him in the pond. Look, I don't want to be here any more than you want me here. Are you married, Miss Turner? No. It's pretty obvious that you've never had anyone you love die. I'm just doing my job. I'm... I want you and your friend to leave right now. I've had enough disrespect for today. Thank you for the coffee. I'll come back if there's anything else. 
but we have new information that was not available to Miss Turner at the time. We need your help. She's not answering any more questions. It concerns the weapon that killed her husband. Robert, what the hell is this about? Have you ever seen a handgun like this one? No. Have you purchased or had in your possession a handgun like this one? She's not answering that question. Look, John, what we've got, it's not pretty. Robert, what's going on here? I must officially ask her one more time. In the last three months, have you purchased a handgun like this one? What's going on here? Are you charging my client? Mrs. Clare, we must read you your rights. You are under arrest. Jane, I'll arrange bail. I'm going to clear you, Jane. You have nothing to worry about. Andrew Garfield, what is this? He can't handle this case. Have you checked him out? He was almost disbarred for jury tampering. He was working as a prosecutor, and a good one, too. And then he tried to put away Anthony Fabrizi. Does that sound familiar? Well, it should. Your husband was in business with him. He rebuilt half this city. Fabrizi was being tried for fraud, and Andrew Garfield is running the show. Only it's not going so well. He's losing the case. So he tampers with a juror. And all hell breaks loose. Fabrizi gets off. Garfield resigns. He's lucky he wasn't disbarred for jury tampering. No. Ask him, Jane.
call it a Smith and Wesson divorce. <laughs> she shoots him, marriage over. So what next? What do you mean? Claire, what do we do now? Listen, Frank, I don't need you on this case. It's open and shut. What is this bullshit, Andrew? I thought we were friends. We are. I was already working on this for you. Look, I understand. Just, I don't need you anymore. There'll be other cases. What's the matter with you? Is someone saying crap about me? No, Frank. Everybody uses everybody. Andrew, listen to me. Look in the mirror. Look at your track record. There's no deals here and then off for a drink and a sandwich. Saint Laurent's using this. He's been overlooked for judgeship. He sees this as his ticket. You're going to have to go the distance. This is my coming out party. Oh. Oh, <laughs> she's no debutante. This isn't middle America. There are no white picket fences surrounding this mess. This is not your common and happy marriage, divorce, and everything's all right. This is complicated, messy murder. And you're jealous. You know damn well right this could be a million dollar paycheck. And you're afraid I'm not going to talk to you anymore, right? Hmm? Okay. What? Okay. You didn't hear this from me, but we think she's involved with someone. What do you mean? Well, the security guy saw a beat-up car around Claire's house. Outside, in the drive, leaving at weird hours. Maybe she was unhappy. There's more. Okay. The morning after the murder, he saw the car driving away from the house in a manner that he describes as being suspicious. Is this evidence you're sharing with me? No. No. It's just being investigated. Make it a car and a couple of other things are a little hazy. A couple of other things? Theories. Mm. Well, when your theories turn to facts, we'll talk. Is that it? It may be too late. purchased a handgun with the sole intent and for the only purpose of murdering her husband. Mr. Garfield. Jane Louise Clare is innocent. That is a fact. You see, this woman is not only innocent, but she's a victim. Mm -hmm. She's being used as a pawn. Murder based on what? Hmm? No physical evidence. Only circumstantial. He talks about motivation. Anyone can. 
can have a motive. I can have a motive. The question becomes substantiating the motivation. That's justice. If we listen to the prosecution, we've already judged her guilt based on her status in life. This is not justice. This is not the duty of the court. Francis Bacon once said, and I quote, in order to be just, we must cleanse all the idols of the mind. Like false phantoms, we must not be swayed by any illusions that clog our perceptions, but we must be swayed by only, only, you back then. Why, I whipped you nine times out of ten. Eh, most of the people I represent are guilty. I just give them fairness. I mean, I'm in for the dollar as much as the next guy. I just gotta feel right about getting it. So when I'm there, I can live with myself. What happens to the ones you miss, the ones that get away? You were a prosecutor for too long. No, 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 Fishy. I'm telling you, the law has limitations. God has limitations. Well, you can keep your faith. Look, our job the thing we do to earn our living with. It's not to be judge or jury. It's to uphold the laws. So when we go home, we can live with ourselves. You live by that? You do also. You just choose to avoid it. A form of self-defense or self-preservation. Mr. Norbert Clare was killed by a wound to the chest, the result of a shot by a 357 Magnum. He was probably swimming when he was surprised by the pond. Approximately how much did Mr. Clare weigh? At the time of death, he was about 160 pounds. Could you personally lift him up and carry him, say, all the way to the pond? No. What if he was killed in the studio and then put in the pond? Well, there would have been some bruises or other marks on the body. What if he was carried? No blood was found anywhere else in the house. Wrapped and cleaned, then carried. If only one shot was fired, it would have been an easy mess to clean up. I suppose it's possible. What if her husband was killed somewhere else and then moved to the pond? In your opinion, would it be an impossible feat for a woman of Mrs. Clare's size to do? I guess. No further questions. No questions. Yes, I was in charge of operation for his trucking and cement company. Did he ever discuss personal matters with you, namely his wife? Yes, on occasion. Did he discuss his marriage with you? He was convinced she was having an affair. He was in the process of proving it so he could file for divorce. Hmm. When he mentioned uh, divorce, did he say when he was planning to do this? Did he give you a time frame? So according to the prenuptial agreement, Mrs. Clare would have received a relatively small sum had her husband divorced her. Now you are the executor of the will. Yes. Who are the beneficiaries? Mrs. Jane Clare is the sole beneficiary. I see. Isn't that a rather unusual prenuptial agreement? Well, Mr. Clare didn't care what happened to his money after he died, 
so it was a concession for Mrs. Clare for agreeing to the terms. Hmm. And what is the total value of the estate? About 20 million. 20 million? Mm -hmm. So, in other words, Mrs. Clare had very little to gain by divorcing her husband, but everything to gain by killing him. Objection! Sustained. The jury will disregard Mr. Saint Laurent's statement. It will be stricken from the record. We'll resume tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Someone was in my apartment. I'm going crazy. Okay. okay. I can't help you bury your heart like this. I can't. I can't help it. You can. You can help it. Okay, hey, 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 hey. Relax. Take a deep breath. Hey, look at those ears. charges, selling, possession, one grand theft auto. I was never prosecuted on that charge. Sorry. And now you're saying that this woman drove to Ottawa to buy a gun from you. That's right. Weren't you recently picked up on a possession charge? Crack? How did he know that? I have no idea. Objection, your lordship. The witness was never prosecuted. Overruled. Will you offer leniency in exchange for your testimony? Objection! The right situation is also necessary for a murder to be perfect. Here we have a shadowy figure named Anthony Fabrizi, a greedy employee of Noby Claire named Claude Martin, and a gun dealer named Biles. Hence, the perfect murder is easy. Sir Andrew says maybe he was killed in the house and then put in the pond. But Mioka answers there would have been some bruises or other marks on the body. Andrew says, what if he was carried? Now, this is where Mioka really lost it. What do you make of it? He either knows something we don't, or he's got quite an imagination. I don't think he swayed the jury. That doesn't concern me. What concerns me is that when Martin mentions the amount of the estate, he reacts to her. I think you're reaching, Hobbit. Mm -mm. He either knows something we don't, or he's screwing her. Okay, page 24. Well, you would like to call to the stand Carlin Drifthauser. Objection. She's not included in discovery. Your Lordship, a reluctant witness. I'll allow it. Trifthauser, what is your occupation? I worked in the line at General Motors. But right now, I'm out of work. And where do you live? 
today I'm staying at the Mission downtown. What is your relationship with Jane Claire? Eleanor is my daughter. She always dreamed she'd grow up and marry a millionaire. And when was the last time you spoke to your daughter? The last time I saw Ellie, she was in high school. He was poor. I had to leave her in a foster home. I think she hated me for it. Thank you for coming down. Mr. Garfield. Your Lordship, since this is a reluctant witness, I'd like some time to consult with my client. Recess until 10 tomorrow morning. Thank you. law in Montreal? Yes. Do you know why Mrs. Jane Clare sought out your services? She wanted to know if she could have her prenuptial agreement invalidated. Mm. Did she tell you why? She wanted a divorce, but she didn't want to end up with nothing. I told her half a million dollars didn't sound like nothing. Indeed. Now, there are plenty of good lawyers right here in St. John. Why did Mrs. Clare go all the way to Montreal to find you? My guess is she didn't want to draw attention to herself. Mm. How much did she pay you for your services? She didn't. She didn't. No more questions. Mr. Garfield, you can begin your cross-examination. <clears throat> Mr. Wheelock. You were formally employed with the 
Montreal firm of Kern, Dollar, and Garnier? Yes. And you were fired for falsifying evidence in the case the firm represented? I left because of a conflict of interest. The Bar Association suspended you for one year. And it was during this time that you represented Jane Clare. Isn't that highly unethical? I had no money, a family. So you're here today to rip apart Mrs. Clare's character to clear your own conscience? It wasn't like that. You acted unethically. If you're looking for redemption, go to church. Objection. Withdrawn. No further questions. You may step down. Your Lordship, I would like to question under redirect, please. Go ahead. Mr. Wheelock, in your opinion, what was the real reason that Mrs. Clare came to you? I didn't really care to question her intentions. Were you having an affair with Mrs. Clare? Yes. Were you married at the time? I was separated. So, obviously, things didn't work out. With Mrs. Clare, that is. It all came down to her husband. We could never really be together. He would always be in the way. Do you think Mrs. Clare wanted her husband out of the way permanently? Objection. Sustained. Did she ever bring the subject up? No. She never got the chance. I guess my wife was key to that. Your Lordship, no more questions. The prosecution rests its case. Mr. Garfield, you can call your first witness Monday morning. Thank you, Your Lordship. checked in with us on the 24th. But I don't show any record of her leaving. What do you mean? She prepaid for four days. She would have checked out on the 29th. What about travel arrangements? Schrifthauser, that's a German name, isn't it? Eleanor. You have it. Chevy Lumina, rented November 24th, no drop-off. Oh, wait a minute. Drop-off, St. John, November 25th. anyone else. You are, Frank. You are.
Hello? You're in some trouble. Who is this? I have information regarding the death of Norbert Clare. What kind of joke is this? Right, this down. 1267 Boulevard Laville. In the basement. Do you have it? Yes. Let's get started, Mr. Garfield. I'd like to recall Claude Martin to the stand. I'll remind you that you're still under oath. This is relevant. Your Lordship, I'll show that it will become clear. Okay, but make your point. Mr. Martin, your salary, what is it? $59,000 a year, plus a $5,000 bonus at Christmas. Last Easter, you took your family to Bermuda. Objection, Your Lordship. Overruled. But Mr. Garfield, stay on course. I have here. A vacation to Florida. That was a business trip. You recently bought a house in Halifax, 5,000 square feet, 15 acres, a pool, or $600,000 all on your salary. Come on. Where are you getting the money? Mr. Garfield, make your point. The night before Mr. Clare's murder, he called you several times from Detroit. The phone charges from the Omni Hotel. Is this your number? That's correct. What did he discuss with you? Serious business matter. Okay, Mr. Martin. You want to play games, I'll play games. Mr. Martin negotiated trucking contracts for less the going rate, specifically with Continental Construction, that he received numerous kickbacks for doing so. Then Noby Claire, having discovered this, considered the contracts invalid because they were illegally negotiated. So, he pulled his trucks off every continental project, costing the projects millions of dollars. Isn't it true that Noby Claire was about to expose you upon his return from Detroit? No. You were going to jail. Except Noby Claire never got that chance, did he? Objection, Your Lordship. Sit down, Mr. Sandoran. You're crazy. I didn't kill him. You had every reason to. No! I'm gonna ask you one last question. Who... Continental Construction paid you off. Objection, Your Honor. None of this is relevant. Overruled. Answer the question, or I'll hold you in contempt. Anthony Fabrizi. Your Lordship, may we have a few minutes recess, please? Recess.
recess allowed, 20 minutes. of New Brunswick versus Jane Clare is hereby dismissed. Members of the jury, thank you for your time and patience. You are free to go. protected you with Fabrizi. Huh. You protected me. You know, it's not always about right or wrong. Fabrizi's about tradition. He supplies things. And this city needs people like him. It avoids dissension up and down the line. Robert, why don't you save your lectures for your law students? It's not personal. I need your help. I told you everything I know in court. Martin Germain. Every reason to kill Claire, probably some strong motive to kill Frank. So you really think it was him? It's not my job. If it were you, wouldn't you have cleared up your tracks a little better? You know, Robert, I should have nailed you when I had the chance. Always challenging. I wonder where all this bitterness comes from. Andrew. What? I think you know something. Andrew. Yeah, what? Listen. We checked out Martin, and it looks like he may have an alibi. We think she knows something. You put her on trial for murder. Now you want to question her for what she knows? You're crazy. Listen, Andrew, watch it. It's not over with her.
sell the house. It's a good idea. Good idea. We're gonna have a career today together. Hey, you could be so successful. My man. Successful. Hey. What's wrong? What's the matter? Talk to me. Services rendered. It'll certainly change your life. Half now, half six months from now. One million total. I was wrong about you, Garfield. There's a position here if you want. We can guarantee you a partnership in a year. I'll definitely think about it. You'd be a great asset to this firm, Andrew. Anything to keep it. You'll do anything to keep it. 
Let's know what you think. Okay? Oh, am I right? Huh? Am I right? Jane. How will it happen? Uh, Andy. No. What can I expect? the money to success and you got to screw my girl but the money <laughs>
killed him. We had no choice. We had no choice. Yeah, I'm learning to drive in jail. As someone had to take the fall. You're sick. You. You are sick. just want your assurance that Andrew will get a fair trial. hearing 